Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue looking at the arm, or brachium region, and this time we're going to be discussing the muscles in the posterior compartment of the arm. So we'll do a brief review, kind of like we did in the previous video. We're looking at a cross section of the arm right here. This bone in the center is obviously the humerus, and we have two septa, or intermuscular septa. So over here, this is the medial side of the arm. This septum right here is called the medial intermuscular septum. It's an extension of the deep fascia surrounding the arm that connects it to the humerus. We also have a similar one on the lateral side of the arm. This one connects the humerus, again, to the lateral side of the deep fascia of the arm. This is the lateral intermuscular septum. And these two septa combined, along with this humerus in the center, divide the arm, or brachium, into two regions. Up here we have the anterior compartment, which we discussed in the previous video. And again, recall that there are three muscles here. Superficial biceps brachii, the deeper brachialis muscle, and then we have a third one not visible here, probably just because of the level of this cut, and um, that's coracobrachialis. Now we're going to look at the posterior compartment. And in the posterior compartment, we really just have one muscle, and that's the triceps brachii. Triceps brachii is a three-headed muscle, thus the name triceps. The brachii in the name describes the fact that it is in the brachium, and then triceps is the fact that it's a three-headed muscle. In this cross-section, we can actually see the three heads. And I'm showing you this first because the medial head, which is right here, is generally going to be covered up. It's the deepest of these three, so we're really not going to be able to see it very well. All right, so if we look at this muscle, and here's the medial side of the arm. So the long head of the triceps is actually the most medial. Okay, This is long head of the triceps. It turns out that the long head of the triceps is going to be the only head that actually attaches at the shoulder. Okay, So it's going to be able to control the shoulder joint to some extent. The other two heads, which are right here, over here on the lateral side we have the lateral head, and then this deeper one, which is medial to the lateral head, is the medial head. Notice that the medial head is not the most medial. The most medial is actually the long head. Okay? The medial head's kind of sandwiched between the long head and the lateral head. Also notice that right here, the medial head has a very strong attachment on the humerus. Right? So hopefully that makes sense. Also, if we look here embedded kind of in this fascia right here of the lateral intermuscular septum, we have the radial nerve. That's important because the radial nerve is actually going to innervate the triceps brachii muscles. Now we're going to look at the back side of the body. So here's the shoulder right here, and then here's two of the visible triceps heads. Again, we've got three heads, a long head, a lateral head, and a medial head. This one right here, which seems to be going toward the shoulder, really the scapula, this is the long head of the triceps. It's the only one that actually originates on the scapula. It's specifically going to originate on the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. So the infraglenoid tubercle is a little uh, projection just inferior to the glenoid cavity. Remember that the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa is part of the scapula that articulates with the head of the humerus. So right here, this is the head of the humerus. It would actually articulate with the glenoid fossa, which would be approximately right here, or glenoid cavity. Just below the glenoid cavity, that projection, infraglenoid tubercle, that's the origin of the long head of the triceps, which is right here. The lateral head, which we can see right here, has its origin above the radial groove. And again, it's going to be on the posterior surface of the humerus right here. So this right here is the origin of the lateral head of the triceps. Again, the medial head we can't see. That's deep to both the long and the lateral heads. But the medial head is going to have a similar origin. It's just going to be uh, a little bit anterior to this origin since we're looking at the posterior surface. It turns out it's actually going to be uh, below the radial groove, whereas the lateral head originates above it. Okay, So if you were to imagine taking off this lateral head right here, kind of where I'm tracing roughly right here would actually be the origin of the medial head. But notice that all three of these heads or at least these two that you can see, along with the medial head, converge as they go distally into one very large muscle belly. 
Uh, this kind of lighter area right here, this is the common tendon of the triceps brachii. It's a very large tendon, and if you actually um, flex your elbow, just put it into flexion, it's very easy to palpate this large tendon. It feels very flat once you have your elbow at 90 degrees. In general, all three of these uh, heads, they converge, and the common insertion is going to be the olecranon process, or olecranon, of the ulna. So they all insert on the ulna. Now the blood supply to the triceps brachii is going to be mainly the deep brachial artery. Although the long head, because it's so far over here and it's originating on the scapula, it's going to have a little bit extra blood supply from the posterior circumflex humeral artery, but that's only for the long head. But all three of these to some extent are going to be supplied by the deep brachial artery. And then the innervation is twofold. Um, again, we have the radial nerve and axillary nerve. If we're looking at the radial nerve, the radial nerve is really going to have some innervation of all three of these heads, and generally we consider the radial nerve the primary innervation. However, for the long head of triceps, there's a little bit of axillary nerve innervation. Axillary nerve, recall, also innervates the deltoid muscles. And the action of triceps brachii is pretty straightforward. It's going to be extension of the elbow. Now because the long head of the triceps actually originates from the scapula, that is the infraglenoid tubercle, it crosses the shoulder joint. So only the long head is going to be able to assist in extension of the shoulder and a little bit of adduction of the shoulder. Okay? Lateral and medial heads do not cross the shoulder joint, so they're only going to be able to do elbow extension. However, all three of them participate and are the agonists or prime movers of elbow extension. So hopefully that makes sense. That's your triceps brachii. Now there's one other muscle here that's not technically part of the posterior compartment. It's actually much more distal, and it actually is going to be mostly distal to the elbow joint itself. But some people will actually talk about it here because it turns out that this muscle is partially blended with the triceps brachii. In fact, in some sources, it'll actually consider an extension of the triceps brachii. This muscle is called the Ancaneus or Anconius muscle, and it's right here. This muscle is going to originate here on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, so much more proximally than the triceps. And as the fibers descend distally, they're going to project medially. And they're kind of going to broaden, have a broad insertion right here uh, on the olecranon process and just in general the ulna right here. Okay? What the Ancaneus does is it assists an elbow extension, so it assists the function of the triceps. However, it's important in preventing elbow impingement. Okay? What that means is that it really pulls on the capsule of the elbow joint and prevents that capsule from being pinched when you put your elbow into full extension. So it pulls on the joint capsule here on the elbow joint and prevents it from being pinched between the humerus and the ulna whenever you're going into extension of the elbow. Okay? It also tends to stabilize the elbow during pronation and supination. So it's more of a stabilizing muscle. It doesn't have a whole lot of function in extension of the elbow, but it is known to assist the triceps brachii. And again, it's partially fused with the triceps. And so some sources in, in the past have actually considered it just another head of the triceps that actually extends a little bit further down onto the ulna. Okay. Its blood supply is also via the deep brachial artery, like the triceps brachii, but it also is uh, supplied via the recurrent interosseous artery. Its innervation is going to be the radial nerve, just like the triceps. Again, that receives a ventral rami from C5 all the way through T1, so radial nerve is, remember, all of the ventral rami of the brachial plexus. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the posterior compartment of the arm or brachium. Hopefully it gave you a good understanding of the triceps brachii and the Ancaneus muscle. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to look at the posterior compartment of the arm or brachium. Thank you.